Well, happy Tuesday again, and welcome to Groundhog Day. That's right, that day where you wake up and everything is the same all over again. We are now in, yes, that's right, week 10 of shelter in place here in Santa Cruz, California, and it doesn't show signs of stopping. Yeah, it's kind of like that song, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us get moving. This is senior fitness and we are going to be working for about oh, 30 minutes or so of getting the body moving. And what you may require is a chair. And if you happen to have, uh, well, I have a can of vegetables here. It looks like I've got a can of uh, organic black beans as well as organic garbanzo beans. Tell you what, you don't have to go organic. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to open them up. We just need a little bit of weight. And funny enough, this is about a pound or two. So if you're like a lot of other people who were a little late to trying to get to the sporting goods store to get some exercise equipment at home because you're sheltered in place and they ran out, chances are free weights, dumbbells, those type of things aren't going to be delivered from China anytime soon, maybe several weeks away, but you've got things in your home where you can use it. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using household items that you should have around for movement and exercise because there is really no excuse. There's no gym open right now. Well, that's okay. We can get moving nonetheless. I happen to have a small step here because I'm in a one room studio with no stairs climbing up to the second floor. However, however, you might have something like that at home. So if you've got stairs going up, well, you've got yourself a step. And we're going to be using that in just a little bit after we get warmed up. The cans are going to come in handy for a little upper body action, reaching and moving around. So we'll keep those there. If you happen to be one of the lucky ones that do have dumbbells, by all means, now's the time to really grab them. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> Always have your mask nearby. You never know when a cough is coming. You can go with the cough in the elbow, but everyone should have a mask around just to be courteous of others around you. Also, what I have is a little workout towel so that when you get a little bit of uh, sweat going, go ahead and give it a dab off you. And now, we're going to get warming up and then, tell you what, I am not a big fan of footwear, to be honest. These are just my little bedroom slippers, so I'm just going to toss those off to the side. They serve no purpose for me in regards to exercise. If you have comfortable shoes you'd like to wear, by all means, you don't have to kick them off and be barefoot. But being Santa Cruz, California, and being a beach town, well, we go barefoot a lot. In fact, I'll leave my socks on. You don't need to see my pedicure at this point. Okay, we are going to be doing circuit training today. And what that means is I'm going to come up with 10 separate movements that are going to hopefully wake up the entire body. You'll be working for about 20 seconds, that's all, just 20 seconds of doing one particular movement. We'll get about 10 seconds of a really quick respite, if you will, to get to the next one. So we'll work for 20 seconds and we'll rest for 10 seconds. Work for 20 seconds on another movement and then rest for 10 seconds. And we'll continue this through 10 separate movements. And I would like to go around two, if not three times, with you following along. There'll be some that work our legs, some that work our upper body, and some that work the whole body as one. I do have a timer that I will set up on the wall and hopefully you can see it up there so you can follow along with the timer as well. But before we begin with that kind of circuit training, I would like to do some warm-up movements and we, we kind of call them big dailies. And the big dailies, well, they're called that because we would encourage people to do these movements on a daily basis. And these movements are supposed to be grand in nature. So when I say reach, this is a nice reach, but this is an even more wonderful reach because as you reach further from your center, you excite your nervous system, which turns on the muscles and stimulates the brain. So in previous classes, we've done some brain training with dual tasking and coordination. I might throw that into this circuit if, if I kind of come upon it throughout the next half hour, but know that the more you move, the more we stimulate the brain anyway. 
Okay, how we're going to start off is just by sitting at the edge of your seat, which I'm sure just watching this, you're already there. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be reaching forward, standing up tall, and then reaching forward once more as you sit back down. And what I like to do is just five of these, just to kind of get things going and wake them up. And we don't want to feel any joint pain. If that's the case, then you want to not probably do that movement or adjust your form and see if that changes. But I don't want you moving into pain. Here we go. Reach forward, stand tall, reach forward, sit down. Reach forward, stand tall, reach forward. There's two. Reach, stand, reach, sit, reach, stand, reach, Sit, let's do one more. Reach, stand tall, reach far, and sit down. Fantastic. From here, we're gonna get up to our feet. So I guess we have to do one more squat to stand on up. I'm just gonna move my chair slightly off to my side with the seat back nearby. So if I need to, if I find my form or my balance faltering, then I can easily grab on here. If you want, if you feel compromised with your balance for whatever reason, it's not against the law here to get a second chair and turn it in the same kind of place so I can have both hands here. You can use the countertop or a table or even a door frame, however you want to do it. What we're going to do is imagine there is your house pet right here, dog or cat, but it's a fairly large animal that you have to step over and land across to the other side. Then change your mind, push off that leg, reach up with that foot, and bring it back down beside the other. I'm going to alternate legs, stepping up over the dog, landing, and pushing back again. And we'll just keep on moving back and forth for a total of eight repetitions. So I'm going to do four on the left and four on the right. Here we go. Step over and push back. Switch legs. Step over and push back. If you feel like you don't need the seat back of the chair, then I would encourage you to let your arms go wide with every step you take. Big step and return. Big step and return. That's it. Stepping over the dog and coming back to a central place. Here we go. Right there. So that's about four on each side. I'm not known for my accurate counting ability, so you'll have to forgive me if that was only six. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of a different stepping action. You'll see I've put the chair in front of me so I can have the seat back right here because what I'm going to do is rather than stepping forward and backwards, I'm going to just step simply to my right and to my left. Now I have the other house pet and both of them are on either side of me. So I'm going to step over the dog on my right and come on back. And then I've got to step over the dog on my left and come on back. Now, I was talking about dual tasking earlier. We want to improve our, cognit uh, our cognitive process, our ability for our, our brains to function, which mine was faltering a moment ago there. So what I like to do is as you step side to side over the dog, you're going to give me a breed of dog. Here we go. Perhaps a poodle, an Airedale, a Cairn Terrier, a Labrador. A Great Dane, a Malamute, or a Jack Russell Terrier. There we have it. And what you can do is later on this week, play this program again. Or if you want to throw out colors in the rainbow, or foods that you would never eat or your favorite foods, any of those things to just process some thought while you're moving. So there was our side stepping. We've gone up and down and we've moved forward. So what I'd like to do next is I'm going to pull this chair just slightly off to my side, stand here, and we're just going to work on arm motion. The first one is just taking the arm around in a beautiful circle. What I'm going to encourage you to do is not allow this elbow to bend and turn it into something like this. Keep the arm as rigid and firm as you can and reach behind you.
You'll see that I have to turn my body a little bit in order to do that, but that's okay. Just feel that reaching back effect. My whole body, in fact, will rotate a little bit as I reach back. Now let's do the same thing on the opposite arm. What is that like just to open up the shoulder joint to reach on up? Because if you consider your day-to-day -day activity, for many, many years, it's probably been a while since you climbed a tree or hung from a jungle gym or any of those other kid activities. And if you think about it, rarely do we ever get our arms up here. And if it is, it's usually holding weight or putting maybe groceries up in the cabinet or, or pantry, top shelf kind of thing. Every time we reach up, all this muscle tissue just breathes in a breath of life. It opens up. But we've been sitting at our computers, at our steering wheel, at the dinner or breakfast table, reading a book. This tissue under here just gets congested and it doesn't have much breath. So this simple movement, maybe you get to the pool. And if you are able to get to a pool these days, you're a very fortunate individual. But for many of us, we are not able to get to a pool, so even the backstroke or the freestyle crawl is something that we're not allowing our shoulders to experience. So that's a wonderful movement there. One last one for the shoulders would be to have the arms either up by your side or down here. The higher up you bring those arms, the more weight the arms are going to appear on the shoulders. So it's going to be a lot more work than completely having them by your side. You'll choose what angle you would like to have them. I'm going to choose shoulder height and you can choose anywhere from here below. You're going to rotate your entire arm and shoulder forward on one side while the other side goes in the opposite direction. And then we're just going to switch. The one that was up starts rotating downward and back while the other one rotates up. As you continue this motion, you should see that one shoulder drives up and forward while the other one sinks back and down. How does that feel? You can allow your head to turn toward the palm that's up or you can keep your head still and try and open up some of the restricted tissue you might experience along the sides of your neck. That's just a nice way to get things going. The last one for the shoulders I think I'll do is curling in my fingers so that the knuckles of my index and middle fingers can be placed with palms forward, thumbs down. Those knuckles can be placed right outside my eyes against the soft tissue of my temples. And from this position, I'm going to just bring the elbows forward and draw them back. For some of us that are a little restricted in the shoulders or mid-back, we might find that this is as far as you can go to start off with. Have patience and determination because over time, just in doing this right now alone, there is no real reason why most of us cannot achieve contact in the elbows together. You just have to keep working at it. We're basically thawing out the frozen meat that you've had in your freezer for some time. It may take a little while to get nice and supple and pliable, but the more you stay at it, the better it's going to get. Okay, let's get into that circuit training. I'm just going to find my timer. You never know where the gremlins may hide them these days. Let's see, I've got it right here. All right, hiding underneath some exercise equipment. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to set the timer up. Let's try that again. For 20 seconds of work and tw t uh, we'll do 10 seconds of rest. Bear with me now. There we go. And I'm going to put a little 10 second timer on there. Okay, get ready. I'm going to guide you through these movements. We're going to start by sitting in the chair and doing the same movement we warmed up with. We're going to be standing up and sitting down. 20 seconds. I can come all the way down and rest completely and then push off. I can use my hands on the armrests or my thighs. If I want to increase the intensity, I can just barely tap the seat cushion. 
I can have my arms out to help me with balance, and I can actually go quicker to try and get more repetitions in. Next, we're just going to march in place. So standing near something, if you need balance or free space, we're just going to bring the knees up. And as I bring the knees up, I'm going to lift my toes toward the ceiling too. So that flexes my feet upward. I want to stay nice and tall as I march in place. The pace that you choose is your own individual pace. You want to feel safe yet challenged. There we have it. Now, one of those warm-up exercises was stepping over the dog. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to be here just in case we need something. But I'm just going to step out, and I'm going to bring my weight forward and then stop and push on back. In the gym setting, we may call this a lunge, but all I'm doing is some fall prevention. I'm pretending that I'm tripping and falling forward. I'm catching myself and being safely returned back to home base. Beautiful. This is where we're going to take those cans now. Yeah, you got to keep moving. Arms around your head, alternating. Reach up, put the groceries away in the cabinet. Basically, that's what we're looking for. You'll see that I'm slightly leaning to one side and the other because I'm really trying to reach up there. Reach. Open up all that muscle tissue that gets all gunked up and compressed between the ribs and the underarms. There we have it. Now, if you want to, you can hold on to the cans because after this next movement, we're going to need them again. We're going to step side to side, just like we did with the warm up. You can have that seat back right in front of you to hold on to, counter, whatever you'd like. I'm choosing not to. I just want to be free to move without holding on. Again, safe yet challenged. Can I go to the left and catch myself? Go to the right and come back to center. Those we call lateral lunges. So we're going to do a boxing-like action next where I'm going to reach in front of me and across to the opposite side, holding on to my organic garbanzo beans and organic black beans. After the workout, I can always open up the can and make some succotash or some type of three-bean salad. That's not a bad idea. Just shake it up. In fact, if you have any groceries that need shaking, this would be a fantastic way of getting exercise. Perfect. All right. This is where we're coming to the step up. So if you've got stairs nearby, this all we're doing is we're going to stay with one leg possibly, and I'm just going to put my foot on the step, and I'm just going to focus on the leg that's on the step to start with. I'm going to do 20 seconds on one leg, catch my breath, and do 20 seconds on the other. The pace you choose is your own. You don't have to try and stay with mine. You are free to go faster or slower. It's up to you. All right, now it's time for my left leg. Here we go, just stepping up and down. I forgot to put my weights down, so I guess that's just added benefit. If you want to, you can start doing some arm curl actions with these. That's fine and dandy. Just moving up and down. You can try and coordinate alternating arms, get a little fancy with it, that's fine. So with the step ups, I've woken up my legs. I'm going to try and lower down to the floor on one knee and then come back up. So can I get down here, propose marriage, and then stand back up? That's all we're looking for. You'll see that I'm putting my hand on the seat just for some comfort and the other hand's on my thigh because I don't want to smash my knee to the ground. I just want to kiss it gently to the carpet and then stand back up. That was one leg. We've got the other. I'm just going to move to the other side. Do the same thing here, taking the leg closest to the chair, lowering down, getting that knee to the ground. And why might this be a good exercise? Well, it's not very often for us to lower ourselves to the floor. Typically, we lower ourselves to the chair or into bed. But how many times do you get on the ground and start moving around? It's an unfamiliar territory. So let's familiarize ourselves with being on the floor. Next exercise is simply crawling. Now you can crawl on your hands and knees just to start with. And just like your grandchildren, I want you to keep the head up and look everywhere you go. Don't lay your head down and don't sink down. Lift the chin and start moving around. 
For more intensity, I could lift my knees off the ground. That's a lot harder. So if you're feeling like this is really easy, there is a situation that you could have. Oh, we're going to come back up to a standing position. And this time, we're going to be opening up the body as we step sideways. Here, and then the feet and hands come together. Step to the other side and back. Open, close. Open and close. That's it. If you want to, you can make it a jumping action. If that's how you feel, you want to increase the intensity, or you can simply go quicker. Well, that's 10. That's quite remarkable. We got through all 10 movements, and I'm going to let that beep go by. I'm going to fix my little cable to my microphone here. For some reason, it likes going back down my left arm. Got my mask. This might be a good time to use your workout towel, dab your brow, get a little drink of water. We'll be starting again in just a moment. Look at that. We've got 10 seconds. Do you remember what the first one was? Squats. Here we go. Get ready. Sitting down and standing up. As I'm doing this, I'm really trying to keep the pressure even in both feet. Almost as if I'm trying to crush something under both feet as I move up and down. Of course, you can hold on to weights if you feel like you need more resistance. But often as the case, body weight seems to work very well on its own. Moving that chair off to the side, I have marching in place next. All right, driving the knee up with the opposite arm. So we're working on a little coordination, that's kind of nice. Getting that knee to come up nice and high, trying not to lean forward or back, but keeping the head right over the tailbone as you do so. There we go. We have the front lunge or the big step forward. Again, the back rest is here if you need it. You're gonna take a big step and push back. Now what I like to do with each successive circuit, as we call it, is to pry, try and give you a little bit more intensity or more modifications. So I might just reach down and touch the ground with every step I take, and that's obviously going to incorporate a lot more of my body to move. So there's our front lunge. Time for our two bean salad, and we're gonna reach overhead. Now, as I reach overhead to increase the intensity here, I could bring back in that marching in place. And as one arm goes up, the opposite knee goes up. So now, this is what we would call a cross-crawl pattern. One arm is moving with the opposite leg. There's our overhead reach. We've got lateral lunges next, that's sidestepping. You could put the seat back in front of you to hold on to if you need to. And I'm going to step to one side, step to the other. In the previous version, we just stayed upright, shifted our weight. If you want a little bit more Jack LaLanne action, we can take the arm and reach across. Come here and back up. Step to the side and back up. Beautiful. We got one more with the cans here, and that's the cross punching. Okay, as you punch, I'm going to ask you to think of makes or models of cars. Say them out loud. Chrysler LeBaron. Thunderbird. Ford Mustang. The Chevy pickup truck. There you go. See how many cars or trucks you can think of. We have step-ups next. So with that step-up, I'm going to step up, but this time I'm going to drive my knee up a little bit higher. Get it up there. I'm going to allow my arms to kind of swing freely and just drive up and down. Hopefully by now you're like me and you've felt your body temperature on the increase. Everything's feeling warm and, and practically fuzzy now. No joints are talking to me. Just the muscles are moving now, it feels pretty good. I can feel myself breathing a little bit heavier. My heart rate is up. Everything's feeling good. For some reason, a lot of people in this country think exercise has to be something where we beat our bodies up. 
and it's better to scream than it is to sing. But I am going to, I'm going to argue that point. I would rather sing than scream any day. So we want the body to move in a way that feels good. Not a punishing effect. We're down to one knee. And just standing back up again. Can you lower down carefully, gently, and stand on up? It's not so much strength that I'm looking for here as it is coordination and body control. Can I slightly and slowly lower to the ground and then come back up again? There it is. So my left leg was stepping back and the knee was coming down. Now it's time for my right leg. What's interesting here is you might notice there is quite a difference between bringing the left knee down and the right knee. In fact, I would probably imagine that there is one favorite side to you that if given the option, you would choose one leg over the other. And over the course of years, that has become a very habitual pattern so that one side is quite unfamiliar with what we were just asking it to do. I remember we've had to come down to the ground last time we stayed there, so we're going to do some crawling. This time, I'm going to just work on coordinating one hand and opposite knee lifting off the ground. And then I'm going to try and do that backwards. You may seem to think that, oh, that's relatively easy, until you actually execute this. You'll find that changing direction is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Our last one, coming back up to our feet, is what we call that seal jack, or that clapping, stepping sideways action. Here we go. Out to one side, out to the other. One side and the other. Now, if you feel the need to move quickly, shifting back and forth, that's fine. If you want to just take your time with it and explore, what is it like? Can I trust that leg? Can I trust this side? All the better. There we have it. Two times around, but the third time's the charm. So here is another opportunity. Dab the brow. I'm going to put the fan on because I am definitely warming up. And so is the temperature outside. And there we have it. You've got about, oh, 15 seconds or so to get ready. We got 10 seconds now. We're going to start again with the squats. Remember, you don't have to go as fast as you can, but see if you can challenge yourself. Up and down we go. And the beautiful thing is here, is for the last half hour, we have been moving your body in three-dimensional space. We've been getting the hips and the shoulders to explore all sorts of movements that maybe they're unfamiliar with for some time. And at the same time, we've only used a step, a couple of cans, and a chair. Again, no excuses here. We're going to march in place next. Get ready. Here we go. As you march in place, can you march sideways? Don't have to go very far, but can you coordinate this? Can you march turning to the right, turning to the left? Can you march with one leg coming over the other? There's many variations you can choose. Front lunges or steps are next. This time I'm going to take my arms out wide or overhead. So I'm going to go out here for one round. I'm going to take my arms overhead for the next round. I may take both arms to one side or the other, or maybe I'll take them away from the forward leg. Whole bunch of variations we can start to implement into these movements. We have alternating overhead reaches. Speaking of variations, I'm going to reach overhead, but this time I'm going to turn. Like, I've got to put this can up on that shelf and this can on that shelf. I'm going to let my body just turn with emotion and reach. I can keep my head still and just turn my torso, or I can let my head go with me. Letting the head go with me could bring about a little dizzying effect because your eyes are going back and forth rapidly. So carefully, you don't, you don't get dizzy. Lateral steps are next. We're going to step sideways here. And I think I'm going to try and reach. When I go to the left, the left arm reaches down. And when I go to the right, the right arm's going to reach down. 
Previous to this, I had the opposite hand reaching across, such as this. But this time, same side. All about waking up the body. Those are lateral actions. Now comes punching. I might try and do some punching while moving my body. So can I move sideways, coordinate that action? Not as easy as you would think. Never a boxer, never claimed to be, and I'm very glad I am not. That's it, there we go. Step ups, okay. Whew. Step ups, here we go. Driving up and stepping down. Other variations we could do here is barely touching the ground and pushing back up. Can you just tap and push? Tap and push. So my body isn't gonna go down nearly as far, Woo! but it's gonna challenge my single leg balance as I move back and forth. Can I just keep all my weight on that leg while the other foot just simply touches and raises back up again? Okay, I have the other foot on here. Balancing, tap and drive. Still bending into my hip and my knee here and just loading onto that leg. Now who's to say that I have to keep my foot reaching back? I could reach out to the side. I can even reach out in front of me. All of these movements are going to be variations for the leg to experience. Step ups are done. We're going to go down to one knee. Here we go. Down and back. Now let's say you don't want that chair. Can you just simply lower yourself down and come back up again? Can you do that without using your hands on your thighs? If there's no pain, that's wonderful. Explore this motion. Use those legs. And we've got to go back down on one knee because we're going to get ready for crawling. Crawling it is. This time I'm going to try crawling forward and backwards, but not allow my knees to touch the ground. So as one leg goes back, the opposite hand goes back. And as one foot comes forward, the opposite hand comes forward. This is a very demanding and very advanced movement. You wouldn't think so, but I tell you, you don't find too many adults doing that, only kids. And they haven't been around the planet that long to really feel the effects of crawling. We've got one left, and that is seal jacks. Here we go, out to one side and back to the center. Get wide, get out there, and reach. Reach really expand your horizons move that body get on out there and there we have it well that was very nice all in the course of about 30 minutes don't need to do much more than that 30 minutes a day Woo, that's fantastic imagine if everyone did that 30 minutes a day Boy, what the world would be like. So what I'd like you to do right now, of course, have a seat and relax because you did a fantastic job if you stayed with me for three rounds of those 10 movements. But check in with what is your body feeling like in regards to your energy, in regards to your mind. Do you feel more sharp? Do you feel more energetic? Or do you feel like it's time to take a nap? There's no right or wrong there, as long as you're not feeling in pain. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit better than when you started. And that is the purpose of exercise, is to improve our beings, not to tear us apart necessarily. So we're here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, Facebook Live. But if you're interested in seeing previous classes that we have led, you can also go to our YouTube channel, Search Rocky Snyder, CSCS, and you'll see at least a half a dozen classes for those, I would say, 55 and older, maybe 65 and older. It all depends upon how well you move. But give that a shot. I wish you well, and have yourself a wonderful day. We'll see you again soon.